हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू सुधीर राय कोच अ चैनल डेडिकेटेड टू बडिंग ऑफ दलमोलॉजिस्ट टुडे आई बी डिस्कसिंग ए केस ऑफ पोस्टे पोलर कैटरैक्ट विद अ पोस्टे कैप्सुलर डिफेक्ट शेयरिंग इनसाइट्स एंड टिप्स ऑफ मैनेजिंग दिस चैलेंजिंग कंडीशन बिफोर सर्जरी इफ यू केयरफुली एग्जामिन द पेशेंट ऑन द सेट लैम यू कैन ऑफन सेंस ए डिफेक्ट इन द पोस्टे कैप्सूल टू कन्फर्म योर सस्पेशन यू कैन परफॉर्म एन एंटीओसिटी और अल्ट्रासाउंड the b scan which provides detailed imaging to help assess the integrity of the posterior capsule in these cases i usually perform a standard capsular access aiming for a well centered circular opening of our, of uh, around 5 or uh, 5.5 mm maintaining a consistent circular capsular access is key for the stability and, and optimal eye well placement In postpolar cataracts hydro delineation is crucial. Hydro procedures play a significant role but you should avoid hydro dissection. Since the poster capsule often already has defects performing hydro dissection can worsen or extend the tear. Instead focus on carefully careful del- hydro del- delineation to separate the nucleus while minimizing stress on the already compromised poster capsule. In this case because the cataract was very soft so I performed hydro delineation two or three times to achieve effective separation now the nucleus has well defined with a thin rim of cortex surrounding it which allows for safer manipulation during the next steps of the surgery here I started the phaco fragmentation I reduced the intraocular pressure to around 40 mm of mercury to minimize the stress on the posterior capsule Lowering the pressure can help prevent further extension of existing defects during uh, manipulation and during surgery. Since here the nucleus was very soft, I was able to remove it easily. Now I am focusing on removing the uh, thick epinuclear plate starting from the periphery and working my way inward. This approach ensures safer and more controlled removal while minimizing the risk of stressing uh, the posterior capsule. At this point I noticed a small posterior capsular defect which aligns with the with what was evident during the preoperative examination this confirms the importance of careful planning and awareness in such cases never withdraw the phaco tip or ia tip suddenly always ensure the chamber is maintained by filling it with viscoelastics before removing any instruments sudden fluctuations in the anti chamber can cause stress on the posterior capsule potentially extending the tear I am now using coaxial IA for the cortical removal beginning from the periphery my approach is to gently drag the cortical matter from periphery towards the center this allows safer and more controlled aspiration always address the area around the tear last if you attempt to aspirate cortex near the tear too early you risk pulling vitreous into the anti chamber and this this not only complicates the cortical aspiration but can also extend the tear making the procedure more challenging here i am aspirating the cortical matter while carefully keeping the tip away from the posterior capsular tear so now i am focusing on the removal of the cortical matter as much possible while continuously monitoring the posterior capsular tear also my goal is to prevent any extension of tear and avoid engaging the vitreous chamber stability and maintenance is very very important here especially when you are using lower intraocular pressure settings it's important to minimize the fluctuations in anti chamber to avoid potential complications and ensure stability throughout the procedure now we can see a small posterior capsular tear approximately 1 or 2 1.5 mm in diameter and fortunately it is circular although some fluid has leaked behind the posterior capsule into the vitreous cavity as evidenced by the fine particles now visible in the vitreous now before withdrawing the ia tip i am filling the anti chamber with the viscoelastics this helps prevent fluctuations and maintain anti chamber stability even though the quantity of cortical matter is minimal any residual cortex left in anti chamber or behind the vitreous can still trigger triggers the post operative inflammation and it it is essential to ensure complete removal to minimize the risk of such kind of uh, complications again i filled the anti chamber with viscoelastics to prevent the vitreous from coming out through the posterior capsule capsular tear 
The cortical matter was located in the sub, sub incisional area, making it challenging to remove with the coaxial IA. I attempted to physically, you know, manipulate the cortical matter to reposition it into a more accessible area for the safer and easier respiration. So I considered using a bimanual cannula for better access but decided against it to avoid excessive fluid movement in the antechamber. This could potentially extend the smaller uh, controlled uh, capsular tear. Given the situation, I decided to forego further uh, cortical uh, matter removal and proceed with the intraocular lens implantation. So I filled the chamber again with viscoelastics and now I is ready for the implantation. So I started implanting a single piece hydrophobic lens and uh, my idea was just to implant it, uh, insert it and keep the lens over the anti-capsule. Since the hydrophobic lens opens gradually, it provides ample time for proper lens repositioning and placement. So I waited for the lens to gradually open in the anti chamber. Now next I used a Sinsky hook to reposition the lens into the capsular bag. With very gentle maneuvers, I repositioned the lens in the bag and ensured both haptics were properly seated in the capsule. Next, I tapped the uh, IOL haptics to encourage the remaining cortical matter to move anterior to the lens. This allows, allowed me to use the lens as a scaffold to easily remove any residual cortical matter. Now, before entering in, in the IA in the antechamber, I further reduced the intraocular pressure to 20 mm of mercury to minimize stress on the posterior capsule and to prevent vitreous from coming out through the posterior capsular hole. Now I am very happy now the eye well is well centered in the back and the posterior capsular tear has remained stable. Through careful maneuvers I ensured that the tear did not extend and no vitreous has entered the antical chamber or come through the tear. Although we can see some deposits uh, which are visible in the entire vitreous cavity, these will be evaluated during the post-operative period. A thorough retinal checkup is necessary to detect any potential retinal tears and to conduct a detailed retinal analysis. With careful pre-operative planning, thorough patient, patient discussion and consent, availability of variety of eye wheels and proper anesthesia to keep the patient calm and supportive, we can successfully perform surgeries even in complex cases like posterior polar cataract. There was an elevated intraocular pressure due to fluid that had entered the vitreous cavity. To manage the elevated intraocular pressure, we initiated anti-glaucoma oral medication to, to keep the pressure under control. Please feel free to leave comments and suggestions as every surgery is unique. That's the beauty of medical science. This channel is dedicated to budding ophthalmologist and I aim to share my experiences and insights to the best of my ability. Your feedbacks is valuable in helping us all learn and improve. Thanks for watching.